One of the, uh, well, congratulations on what you're doing. That's wonderful. Um, and there, there, as much as so many of the trends in education, I feel are going in exactly the wrong direction, you know, the disappearance of recess and so forth, the over-dependence on technology, et cetera. And in fact, I should say, I mean, there's a debate going on right now about the future of the school and most of us are not involved with it, and it's being run by the people who have a vested economic interest in selling video games in the classroom, computers, and so forth. I'm not anti-tech, but there's even talk with very little sense of embarrassment by the people planning this for future kids, future schools, about what they call stealth, tech, uh, stealth uh, monitoring. The good news is that testing as we know it will go away. The strange news is that we won't need it because the machines will be watching the kids all the time in the classroom, every keystroke they make. There's a lot of talk about many more video games in the classroom. This debate has nothing to do with getting kids outdoors. It has nothing to do with gardens at school and so forth. We, we need to be a part of that debate. But there are these counter trends, like these wonderful school gardens, like you know the, 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 the schools that have decided to be nature center, the growth in the number of nature preschools. All of that is very hopeful, I think, and serves as a way to give some balance. And I'm not against technology again, but we need to see some balance. Uh, in terms of organized versus unorganized, or facilitated versus unfacilitated, uh, experience of nature. One of the ironies of this issue that I kind of grappled with early when I was uh, writing Last Child in the Woods is um, because of the amount of fear that parents and teachers and, and, and all of us feel now that is largely manufactured by news media, not all of it, but um, in order to give many kids some semblance of unorganized experience in nature, we're probably gonna have to organize a lot of it. And we're gonna have to do that with a sense of humor and new ways, et cetera. We're gonna have to learn to stand back and let them have that experience, even though we're still watching. A, a, a woman uh, I quoted in a recent blog called herself a, um, a, a hummingbird parent. And that's different than a helicopter parent. A hummingbird parent <laughs> stands back stays back, hovers around within eyesight, but small, you know, small, and doesn't, does, only swoops in when the, par the, the child is in mortal danger. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, and we're not talking about hovering over kids in the woods with nature flashcards. That's not what they need. Um, but having a garden in which kids can, yes, it's facilitated to a point, but then the kid gets his or her hands dirty and muddy and grows something and realizes that he or she can give life. How wonderful is that? And that takes place, I think, in a realm, if it's done properly, that is separate from adults, separate from the facilitation. And that's so important, what you're doing.